All right, hey guys, Jerry from Showtime Audio. So we have Josh's beautiful Oldsmobile 442. Uh, this is actually a throwback for me. Long, long time ago, this is the cars that I used to do all the time. So for me, a lot of this is really cool. It's bringing me back to when I first started installing. And uh, we're gonna walk you through the entire process. So we're gonna be doing a full system. So radio, changing out all the speakers, five channel amplifier, subwoofer, window treatment. We're doing a full alarm system with a drone tracking app and a kill switch. So this way there's, these cars are obviously very easy to steal. It is an old car, doesn't take much. So we need to step up the level of the install. Just so one of the steps is we're doing a window treatment. So we wanted to show you what that looks like on a classic vehicle. So this particular car, it's a frameless window, right? In a traditional car, there's a metal frame that encases the window itself. On this one, as you can see, there is no metal frame. It is just strictly uh, all open, just glass. So it's a little bit more difficult because they have to get the film perfect all the way around the edge in order to ensure that it's not gonna peel up or, or separate. So on this particular vehicle, we went with 30%. Now what 30% is, is the amount of light that it allows in. So the lower the number, the darker the tint, the higher the number, the lighter the tint. A lot of times that's very confusing. People think, people think the opposite. But if you get 5%, which is limo, that only allows in 5% of light, Basically, it's pitch black. You have to kind of walk up and go like this to even be able to see in the vehicle. With 30%, it's a good uh, uh, medium because it's not too light or too dark. It still gives the car a cool look, but it doesn't make it pitch black so that it's very difficult to see, especially at night. All right, so just wanted to walk you through the stereo portion of it. So we're still working on it, so some of it is still apart. We're still missing the trim. We, have the, we actually have a new shifter because the old shifter has seen better days. So we're gonna, we have a new one on the way. And then, oh, just wanted to show you this thing. So this is flashbacks right here. So for all you young people out there, back in the day, this was one of the height, heights of security. So basically this is a steel column lock. So it goes around the column itself. And what that does is it keeps people from, cause in order to steal these cars, like, like, you, like you've, I'm sure you've seen in an old movie, you, they break this, shove a screwdriver in there, turn it, and start the car. Very similar to the modern version with the Kias. This is the original. So the, uh, back in the day, these were done all the time. It was kind of like a standard. You, but you, the problem with this is you have to put it on every single time you, you want to protect the vehicle. So if you hop out to grab coffee, if you hop out to do anything, it's a pain because you got to put this thing on and then take this thing back off. So um, not the ideal situation. And, and a little bit later, we'll walk you through. We did a full blown security system uh, just to make sure the car is super secure. All right, so this is uh, the radio that the client chose. So the, the challenge here is that this car has a single DIN or it's actually a DIN and a half. The opening is only about that big, so not quite a double din opening, and the client did not want to cut up the car. Normally, we can modify the car. We, we just did another G-body, and we were able to fit a double din in the stock space, but there is some trimming and stuff that has to go on in order to do that. With this client, he didn't want to do that uh, because he, he wants to try to retain it as stock as possible. Obviously, we're changing a bunch of stuff on it, but he didn't want to cut the dash. So he chose, but he still wanted a big, screen radios. He chose this Boss 10 inch. So it's kind of cool. So it's a floating style radio. It is their elite line. So their elite line is like their step up, like their version, uh, their highest version of all their equipment. So it is touch screen. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, backup camera inputs, everything. Another cool feature of this radio is that it is removable. So the cool thing is, it is removable. There's two buttons on the back of the radio and that allows you to remove it and then to reinstall it, just lock it back in place. And obviously once it's mounted and secure, it'll be a lot easier and it'll be you know way more sturdy. And then if you give the radio a minute, it will reboot. Here you go, it does, the cool thing is, it, this radio does wireless Android Auto as well as wireless Apple CarPlay. And you can see it's a big screen. You don't have to cut up the dash. You still have access to your lighter, your heater controls. You know, here's all your information. 
backup camera, everything, right? So it's a really good option for a vehicle like this where you don't want to cut the dash, there isn't a double din opening, and you still want a large screen. The other main benefit is obviously if you want to go back to a sync to the original radio, it's literally remove it because nothing was modified, and you can bolt in the original radio and you'd never know we were there. So this vehicle, we also, so what we went with is again, to try to keep it as stock as possible, we put uh, three and a half inch Memphis speakers in the dashboard, as well as four by 10 Memphis in the rear in the rear deck. And again, all this so that we wouldn't have to cut up the car. Typically in a car like this, back in the day, we would have cut the car and put in a set of six by nines, but it involves some considerable modifications that the client did not want to do, right? So this is, again, everything that we did in this stereo is to retain the integrity of the vehicle, but still give them some great sound, great bass, great entertainment, infotainment system, and functionality. So for the trunk, we decided to go with uh, 212. So we went with 212 JL Audios in, in just a sealed enclosure. And we went with this Memphis 5 channel. This is a really nice amp. It's compact, it's single amp, but it's 900 by one on the base side and 100 by four, I believe, on the, on the high side. But the nice thing about using this amplifier is it gives you everything in a small chassis and still gives you tons of space. So we had to build this amp board in order to mount the amplifier. We still have to clean up the wiring and mount it, and, but you know, just to show you what, how we do it, we don't wanna make any holes in the car itself. So we build this amp board and then mount the amp to it, and then we're gonna mount the board to the wall without drilling holes in the car, it's in the bottom, in the floor of the car. On these vehicles, the gas tank is right under here, so you cannot and should not shoot screws through it because it's a bad, bad day. And then as far as the floor goes, we have this mat in here right now, but this floor is very uneven and typically there's a spare tire. So what we did is we built this floor section just to neaten it up a little bit and also make it a nice flat floor for the sub box to, to live on. And it just gives it a nicer look. So now it looks a little cleaner, looks a little more uh, finished like a newer, newer car. And it sounds amazing. I mean, the amount of bass out of these 212s in this car is pretty impressive, especially it just being a single amplifier, which is a mono and a four channel basically in one chassis. All right, the other thing that we did was we added a bass knob. So in order for him to be able to adjust the bass up and down, we put one right here. So it's nice within reach. And again, he didn't want us to modify anything as far as drilling holes. So what we did is we just mounted it over here again. Old school car, classic, you know? So without having to, cause everything, this way, everything that we do can be reversed without any, you know, being cut or modified or anything. It's literally, you know, remove it, put the car, put the original gear back in it. You'd never know we were there. So we just wanted to check cause uh, Boss Radio makes some claims on the box as far as uh, output voltage. And then we also wanted, just wanted to see if and where it clips at, right? So we're testing it here. So if you look right here on the screen, believe it or not, the radio actually is clean all the way up to 47. So at 47, we still have a clean wave. At 48, we start to have a slight clip. 49, it gets pretty bad. 50, it's clipped, right? But that's still pretty, imp still pretty impressive. I mean, you can go all the way up to about 47 without clipping the deck, okay? Now, the other thing we wanna see is our output voltage. Wait till the track starts again. So up until oh, 47, we're still doing 5.78 volts. So it says four volt pre-outs. We have 5.7 at the 47 mark. So at, at an unclipped volume, we have almost set six volts of output. I'm actually pretty impressed. So it's, uh, you know, we don't like to guess, we like to test. So we wanted to see if the radio could actually do what it says it can do. And so far, it seems like it, seems like it does. For a long time, Boss has made budget-friendly equipment, radios, speakers, all kinds of stuff. I mean, they make tons of stuff. They're stepping up into the higher end stuff and with their, this is their Boss Elite. So it's their 
top tier radio. It's not like they're just their traditional boss. This is what they call boss elite. Under normal circumstances, the uh, boss would not have been our first choice, but the client was really partial to not modifying the dash and also wanting a big screen. If you're looking for a large format screen in a single DIN opening, or you don't want to modify the dash or spend a bunch of money doing that, this is a great option. Again, clean, four volt pre-out, uh, Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, uh, still has camera input, has a basic EQ, nothing too crazy, but it has one, and it's detachable, which is, in some cases, that's that's actually uh, a good benefit. Not um, in today's age, it's not as crazy, but there are places where having a ben having a detachable face radio is a is a good thing if you leave the car parked outside if it's a work van if it's a car that you want a big screen but you don't want it just sitting there in the middle of the open this is a great option two buttons boom the whole thing comes out it's great